y buenos días. Welcome to Clase de Español conmigo, Ruth. Presento clases and I use uh, el libro Pasos so you can join in either con el libro or without el libro if you don't have it. You can buy it from a link in the description and you can also download the transcripts. I got the transcripts in a little booklet because I bought the course pack but you can download these transcripts as a PDF online and there's a link for that in the description too. We're working on Pagina 104 and in the transcripts that is uh, Unit 7, Exercise 13, so you can find that. And what we're doing is looking at Maria who wants to hire an apartment. The word for hire or rent is alquilar. So how would you say Maria wants to rent an apartment? Maria quiere alquilar un apartamento. Now she doesn't want any apartment, she wants a luxury apartment and to do that, to say that, you say de lujo. So a luxury apartment is un apartamento de lujo. So this is something that has lots of bedrooms, maybe eight bedrooms. So how would you say eight bedrooms? Well we're going to go with the word uh, dormitory, dormitorio, for bedroom. That's not a, that is just a bedroom, it's not a dormitory. Dormitory is for many people in English, no? So how would you say eight bedrooms? Ocho dormitorios. How would you say a luxury apartment with eight bedrooms? It's un apartamento de lujo con ocho dormitorios. Now some of the things you might want in your apartamento de lujo, you might want several bathrooms, so maybe three bathrooms. How would you say with three bathrooms? You need the word for bathroom which is cuarto de baño or you could just use baño. So with three bathrooms. Con tres baños. In Inglaterra we tend to have uh, our own front door and we're either in houses, una casa, or una casa adosada, which is a, a semi-detached. Um, in España, they tend to have blocks, apartment blocks, and for those, you need a lift, and that is un ascensor, okay? Un ascensor, so you ascend, en el ascensor. How would you say, um, the apartment has two lifts or elevators. El apartamento tiene dos ascensores. Uh, when we're talking about electrodomésticos, you want el internet. They call it wifi. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> wifi. <laughs> Uh, you also want satellite TV. So that is television with satellite. How do you think that will sound? Have a go. Did you say televisión con satellite? Isn't that nice? Satellite. Uh, you'll also want a fridge, a washing machine. A washing machine is una lavadora and a fridge, various words, you could, you might use una nevera and you think of uh, uh, nieve is snow, so una nevera, something that cools things down. Um, or you might use my favourite which is frigorifico. <laughs> What's not to love about a word like frigorifico? Uh, the other things that you might need to, to consider when you alquilar, cuando alquilas 
un apartamento de lujo is where it is and what's near. So you'll need to know, is it near the beach? Now the beach is la playa and we're going to use the word esta for is it because we're talking about where something is. The word for near is cerca de, near to. So how would you say, is it near to the beach? Esta cerca de la playa? Again, is it near to the town centre? Now, for the town centre, you're just going to say, to say el centro. So how would you say, is it near the centre? Esta cerca del centro. All very easy, ¿cierto? Uh, other things that um, el apartamento that Maria's looking at uh, include are el puerto deportivo. Está cerca del puerto deportivo. Now, if you know that um, that uh, sport shoes are uh, zapatillas de deporte and that uh, deporte is sport, then you, th you might think that it might be a sports center, but no, un puerto deportivo is the marina. So that's nice, you can look at all the yachts and all the, the millionaires coming and going at el puerto deportivo. Está cerca del puerto deportivo. And it might also uh, interest you, si tienes una familia y tienes uh, hijos o niños en la familia, que hay un parque de atracciones cerca. Now, un parque de atracciones in, in Los Estados Unidos, I think you call it um, uh, an amusement park, in Inglaterra, a fun fair, perhaps. Un parque de atracciones. Hay un parque de atracciones cerca. And of course, you want piscinas, which are swimming pools. Uh, this is the last thing that I'm going to tell you in the vocabulario. So, um, piscinas para mayores. Mayores uh, is used for elderly people, but it's also used just to say adults and to distinguish. So, hay una piscina para niños y dos piscinas para mayores. Now, we need to think about las preguntas, the questions that you might ask if you're making inquiries and because you want to alquilar un apartamento. So, the, uh, the, la oficina might ask you, para cuando, when for, para cuando, and they might ask you for how many people. You know the word for how many is cuantas, because personas is feminine. So, for how many people, how would you ask that? Para cuantas personas. And then las preguntas that you might have for la oficina are how many bedrooms has it got? Which is cuántos dormitorios tiene? Uh, does it have a lift? Tiene ascensor? Does it have um, satellite TV? Tiene televisión con satélite. Lovely, isn't it? You might want to ask, is there Wi-Fi? Remember how to ask, is there? You use the word, I. So, is there Wi-Fi? I Wi-Fi. <laughs> isn't that nice? Um, you'll also, also want to ask, if you don't know, um, where is it? And the word for where is donde, and of course you're going to use esta because we're talking about where something is. So where is it? Donde esta? Is it near the beach? Again, you're going to use esta. 
está cerca de la playa. Bien? Now, um, the final question that you will want to ask is how much does it cost? And los precios cambian, don't they? Depende del mes, depende de la semana. So, to say the week starting, you could say la semana que comienza el, and then the number, maybe the 10th of August, el 10 de agosto. So, how much is it is cuánto es. How much does it cost is cuánto cuesta. So, can you ask how much does it cost for the week beginning the 10th of August? ¿Cuánto cuesta para la semana que comienza el 10 de agosto? Brilliant. So that's the end of la clase. Now it's time for you to go to los ejercicios. Si tienes pasos, página 104, actividad 13. La primera actividad is have a look at this text here, which is about Maria, uh, el apartamento de lujo que Maria quiere alquilar. ¿Entiendes? Have a look at the gaps in el texto and try to predict is that gap going to be a number, an adjective, maybe un electrodoméstico, what's going to be in the gap. Bueno. If you don't have pasos, go directly to the transcripts and the link is in the description. Unit 7, Actividad 13, so 13 you're looking for. And what I want you to do is grabar tu voz. There are two parts in el diálogo, un hombre y María. So your, your hombre voice will be Dígame, and then Maria will be, Buenas tardes, quiero alquilar un apartamento. So you make the two voices different and read el texto. And then I want you to put the text away, escuchar el texto y apuntar, which means to note down, apuntar los detalles. <laughs> Bien. Uh, and that's all I want you to do because this practice is what really, really cements your language learning and your knowledge of Espanol. And then you go to España or to Mexico y sorpresa, it's all there waiting for you en el cerebro. And it comes out of your mouth and it's wonderful. So. Do come back for the next Clase de Español because it's all un proceso of building upon what we know every single week, every single day. Okay. Muchas gracias por tu compañía y nos vemos la próxima clase. Adiós.